The biggest mistake I made in my business was not hiring a professional to help me with my money. Not just my taxes, but the actual plan I had for my business. I was completely lost on how to handle taxes, what to do with profit, and how to maintain my income. I had to find a better way. That's when I found Core Financial. Core Financial is a team of tax professionals that actually care about building real relationships with their clients. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all of my tax benefits. Are you struggling with your finances? Look no further. Core Financial is a brand that is nationwide that can help you with your business. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core and they can help you too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to schedule a consultation today. Core Financial, real relationships, no surprises. It seems like there are new cameras and equipment coming out all of the time. It gets increasingly confusing and the FOMO is real. John and I have been preaching for years that the best way to try out new gear is to rent before you buy. There is only one place that we recommend when it comes to renting and that is our friends over at Lens Rentals. Lens Rentals is the premier source for renting not only camera equipment, but lenses, drones, projectors, and more. Do you have a big project coming up and you really need to wow your couple? Wanting to test out the newest camera before you drop thousands on it? You need lens rentals. My favorite thing is that if I love something I rent, I can keep it. They apply a portion of the rental fee to the purchase price, and within a few simple clicks, the gear is mine. So head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash lens rentals and use promo code HTFW15 at checkout for 15% off of your order. Lens Rentals, the only place we recommend renting. Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is John Bunn, and today, as always, I'm joined by my best good, bearded, almost 40-year-old buddy, Mr. Nicholas Brett Miller. Nick? That, that's, how, that's not correct. That's, that was wrong. Nicholas Scott Miller. That is correct. How how are you today? I mean, you're nearing in on 40 years old. Whew. There's some gray in your beard. Like, there's, how are you feeling? <laughs> there's been there's been some gray in my beard for for quite the minute, but yeah. I am yeah. I, I am feeling good. We shot our last wedding of Come 2021 on. this past weekend. So we are done until January of next year, and um, wedding in Austin, Texas. So That's it shouldn't neat. be like like freezing, freezing. It'll probably be a little chilly, but it'll be okay. You know, yeah. Texas weather there. But uh, I am doing well. It is my birthday month, so it is. And it's a big it's a big one for me. But uh, you know, I'm I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How the about 40 you? Year old, the forty year old podcaster, a new movie starring Nicholas Scott Miller. Um, I'm doing well as well. I shot this weekend here in Tulsa, which is kind of rare for me these days. A lot of my weddings are becoming travel weddings, which so I appreciate being able to, you know, be home that evening after the wedding. It, it, uh, so shot this weekend. We've got two left this year, one more in November and one in December. So winding down and uh, as as we do at this time of the year, Nick, we really start to lean into thinking about next year and mm -hmm. if you haven't seen you know 2022 is supposed to be pretty insane when it comes to the amount of weddings that are going to happen just with covid reschedules everything going on in the world uh they're saying that there are going to be more weddings this year upcoming than any year since 1984 which is 37 years i just know that because i was born in 1984 but it's, it's going to be a busy math. year <clears throat> And here's the thing that I keep saying, like, if you could call yourself and tell yourself 12 months ago some things, what would you say to yourself? And future you is calling saying, hey, let's get our stuff in order before you completely burn out next year. Let's think through these things. Let's be intentional. And that, Nick, is why we are hosting a free workshop. Yes, yes. Next uh, Monday, as this drops on November the 15th, uh, we are uh, doing a workshop. It's called uh, Filmmaking with Intention. And if you would like to uh, register for that and save a seat for that, go to howtofilmweddings.com slash intention, howtofilmweddings.com slash intention. You can uh, save a seat. We're going to uh, do a, you know, we have presentations um, in conjunction with our course launch that is going on sale 
a week from today as well. So that's mm-hmm. really exciting. We're going to have some sick giveaways over the two days from that. We haven't like confirmed what we're doing, but I know we're on the same wavelength of like doing some really, really cool stuff. So you want to uh, definitely be a part of that. But one thing that I've been thinking about when it has come to 2021 is there people weren't given the option really to like think like this because of 2020 with COVID and reschedules and and that kind of thing. Like, oh, well, it's, it's going to be crazy. Like I didn't do much work in 2020. So 2021 is just going to be bananas, bananas. I don't have to deal with it. And I wonder how many people are thinking through next year as it's supposed to be super busy. I have talked to, uh, you know, like students in our mastermind group, there was a, a girl who said, yeah, I'm sitting at 37 already for next year. And this was, in like September and we're like, what? And she's like, yeah, I only want to do like 40. And we're like, you're in September of the previous year and you're already like that. Like, and so we want to do this workshop to have you be thinking about how am I going to be booking? If you, if you are going to book that many, like what are you doing pricing wise? Like how are you figuring that out to make those weddings <clears throat> worth it? And so that is the whole idea is being intentional about what you are doing with your business, with your brand, with your film, with your bookings, all that kind of stuff. That's what we're going to talk about over those two days. Yeah. And to like bring that home with this filmmaking uh, with intention workshop, We're also going to be going through some of the things that Nick and I have been doing to be very, very intentional in our businesses as well that have helped us over the last two to three years nearly double our pricing. I mean, Mm. and this is like, I keep getting to a place where I'm like, I mean, I don't know if I could book a wedding more expensive than that. And then I raise my prices and I am booking another wedding that's more expensive. It it just keeps happening. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. That is kind of what we wanted to really, you know, end up talking about today, and we'll get to it in a second. But in that workshop, we're going to give you tangible tools to know your value, know your worth, to have intention on what you're going to be doing for this upcoming year so that this time next year, you're not in a position where you're overworked, you're overwhelmed, you're backlogged. We want to help you now because if you're thinking about this now, that's going to affect next year. But if you just kind of let it happen, let things happen, you're going to be really kicking yourself in the butt that you're like, man, I can't believe I took that wedding for this amount, mm-hmm. you know, thinking, oh, I, I need that booking. Whenever there's going to be an excess of people trying to get wedding filmmakers. And so we have to change our mindsets. And that's what we're going to do in that workshop. So howtofilmweddings.com slash intention. It's mm-hmm. free. We're going to be talking about our course because we want you to join and enroll, of course. But you're going to be able to walk away regardless with an incredible amount of value. So, Nick, I'm really pumped about that. And as you said, the giveaways are going to be sick. We might have to call the doctor. I'm just saying. <laughs> Dad joke? <laughs> hey. hey. Um, but anyway, oh Nick, yes. you and I were talking I about we what, we wanted, yeah, what we wanted to talk about one week before our course launch. And it just so happens that this this last week, you booked one of your biggest wedding packages ever, and so did I. And so we wanted to really talk about how we have been raising our prices and getting these incredible weddings and just break down how you just booked a large wedding, and so did I. And Nick, I'll let you talk real quick. You just booked a wedding. How much did you book it for? What was this? 14000 I mean, whatever, 14000 I remember cool. my last job before starting my own company. Uh, my first year at that job, I made $18,000 uh, for in the a whole year. year. Yeah, in a year. In a year. Yeah. And then yesterday, um, I met with a bride and officially have booked a $15,500 wedding with no travel, local, and my mind is kind of hurting. I hadn't had many bookings in a while and was like being very intentional about limiting the number of bookings that I've had. And I've turned down three or four weddings or they didn't book me for this specific day Mm. because their budget was lower. And because I said no, because I held out, I am reaping the benefit in $15,500 for one wedding. So what we're going to do in this episode, Nick, is kind of just talk through how we got these weddings, how we got these bookings, I'm going to even break down my exact emails that I sent, walk through um, the conversation I had. And as a bonus, if you are in the Complete Wedding Video course, 
I recorded the call with the bride as I booked the $15,500 wedding. It's never seen before. It's exclusively going to be in the complete wedding video course. If that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what is. So, Nick, I want to talk to you first. You just booked talk a $14,000 wedding. When I, I met you, you were booking three to $4,000 weddings. I, I was thinking about that uh, whenever I got this. I got the retainer payment from from this couple after they they booked with me and it was more than like weddings that I was I was booking you know whenever we first met like the retainer payment was more than the entire wedding payment that I was taking you know uh back then so that's uh incredible like I you know it's one of those things that I you know I pinch myself and I'm like what <laughs> how is this you know it's it's really cool Dead sorry. silence. It's, it's, sorry. Yeah. I, I, Can we, we, we just so, had an awkward pause there. Well, um, I, di- I didn't uh, mean to. My, I am put a new iMac, you know, like as we've been talking about, because mine was being weird, and Siri just took over and was asking me a question, and I couldn't hear the end of your thing. <laughs> so there it is. I was like, uh, stop. Oh. Like if I say anything, I'm trying to figure out preferences, how to turn that off real quick, but I can't figure it out. So I didn't hear what you said at the end. I'm sorry. Okay. What did you say? I, I was <laughs> I was just saying how it's it's incredible to me, uh, you know, because for the last three years, uh, you know, Jen and I have been really intentional about who we are working with, what we are doing, what we are putting out there, how we are selling ourselves, how we are presenting ourselves, all of that kind of stuff, and how it is, uh, you know, grown our business. Um, this one uh, is in a, it, you know. John and I talk a lot about, you know, building relationships in your local market and and networking and that kind of stuff. And, uh, this wedding that I got, uh, is, is from a planner, really good friend in town. And, uh, a couple years ago, yes, I think it was two years ago. Uh, she came to me and she said, and she had been kind of in and out of the game for a while. And she was like, Hey, I've got a wedding for you on October, you know, whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, give me info. I was excited because, you know, she had kind of, you know, only been, um, you know, kind of in and out of it. It ended up being her wedding. It was an elopement and Jen and I talked and, you know, we did it for, I mean, it was like a thousand thousand bucks. Like, we're just like, you know, you know, we love working with you. We want to kind of thank you. She's gotten a lot of weddings over the past. And so it was a thousand dollars. Um, we did this wedding and, uh, earned elopement and, you know, video turned out great. We really enjoyed it and that kind of stuff. But as I was, Jen and I were talking about this and I was like, should we charge more, you know, whatever. And we kind of came to the conclusion of, no, she has helped us a lot. So we're going to give her kind of a break and do kind of make it like a marketing kind of expense if you want to think of it that way because as we're going and at that time our out of state stuff was really taking off and this was you know 2019 um you know we weren't uh shooting locally very much and so we thought hey you know it would be great to have someone like that in town as she continues to do weddings that maybe we can keep that relationship with because our relationship with local vendors has been less and less and less because we've been traveling so much more. And, uh, you know, she, uh, reached out to me and, you know, she, she has told me several times, you know, since my wedding and my video, now I always make it a point of my meetings when I'm meeting with couples to talk to them about the importance of a wedding video. Um, because she was like, I didn't understand it fully until I had one of my own. Okay. And, uh, you know, we've, um, built that relationship and she texted me and she's like, Hey, I got this two day wedding. Um, you know, and you know, here's the deals with it. You know, are you available? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we're available. And so, uh, she was like, okay. And it's like, what, what, what costs? And I was like, well, it'll be at least, you know, 14,000, you know, with, with a couple day thing and, you know, travel involved and that kind of stuff. And she's like, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Let me reach out to the couple. And, uh, it was one of those things where they're like, yep, that, that price sounds good with them, but you know, bride needs to talk to mother-in-law, you know, about this. And she's like, let me know if you get anything. And I texted her and I said, Hey, I got an inquiry for the last weekend in September. Jen and I decided we're only taking one more out of state in September and October of next year. And she said, Oh, I just sent them the pricing. We'll let you know, you know, today. And then like 15 minutes later, you know, she's like, yep, they want to go with that $14,000 package. We're good to go. And so that, that was kind of the story. So this one is, is, is one of those ones where, um, 
we always talk about the importance of networking and vendor relationships and working really, really well with other people in town. And I, this is the fruit of that for us working, you know, for seven years, you know, with this planner in town. So, um, I feel like I, I rambled a, a little bit. You, you did. It was great. And I heard the whole thing. Siri did good. not interrupt. And just by saying here, okay, I was making sure that. So I would like to unpack this a little bit because I think that a lot of people will see something like our YouTube channels. You know, mine has 16 or 17,000 subscribers. Yours is over 20,000, 25,000 or something now. And it's like, I remember being in a position where I was looking up the mountain and saying, well, those people, they get mm. the, the big jobs. They're lucky. Like they... And I just remember a, a thousand days ago, like I, I've been really thinking about this concept a lot. In a thousand days, what you can do with your business. It's roughly three years. Um, it's a little less, I think, maybe, but three years roughly. But a thousand days ago, you were charging three to four thousand for a wedding. And this one at 14,000 is the equivalent of you booking four or five weddings in one day. Mm -hmm. 15,500 for me. Three years ago, I was charging 5000 So it's the equivalent of me booking three weddings. And so instead of me shooting 30 weddings at 5000 I could shoot 10 weddings at 15000 and make the same amount of money and have way less overhead, way less cost, way less. Mm. And so it just got, it, it really gets me thinking. And like me being close friends with you and watching from afar and helping you. You know, I remember at the when we started this podcast, it was like, we were sitting here talking like, John, would you, you'd, you'd ask me about, you could hire me for a mentor session on like how to book bigger weddings. And I was like, I want to hire you on a mentor session on how to like edit these things better and get better color. And then you were like, why don't we just record that? Why don't we just, and, and I was like, we should just trade each other's time out. And, and since then watching you over the last roughly thousand days, um, just continue to do the little things, continue to do what we preach, continue. What happens though is most wedding filmmakers quit in their first thousand days. And that's mm. why you don't see people really get further in their business because two years in, they've swam, you know, two thirds of the way across the river and they decide to turn around and quit whenever they were almost there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're out there and you're like, man, I keep hitting my head. I'm not raising my prices like I want to. You would think that it just starts only with, oh, I just need to make better wedding films. But most creatives don't take into account the importance of running their business and being intentional with their numbers, intentional with their branding, intentional with mm. you know all of the things, not just I have really killer edits, so I should charge more. Well, if you've already booked 40 weddings for next year, you can't raise your prices. You, I mean, you can, but like you can't book too many more weddings if you're a solo, you know, team. If you're not going for volume, mm -hmm. but like just knowing those numbers, knowing those things ahead of you, that really, really helps. And so, um, watching you do this, I'm sitting here breaking down and, and unpacking in my mind. Okay, you did a wedding for this planner. How many years ago? Uh, it was. It would have been about two years ago. It was so her two, her elopement two years ago. Yeah. So two years ago, you were roughly three four hundred days into you know the last thousand days of just like intention, mm -hmm. and you decided intentionally we're going to use this as an investment. It wasn't a oh we'll take it because we need the thousand dollars and we're just like the mindset was no we're going to intentionally do this and not every time you make an intentional investment like that into your business does it pay off. And you wouldn't say, well, that's the one reason why I was successful in my business. But it was one of the turns of the flywheel that you've done with Jen over the last thousand days mm -hmm. to now consistently be getting $8,000, $10,000, $12,000 bookings. And I love what you said about like that she shows that video to every single person now that she works with or that she walks them through how important the video is. Yeah. Yeah. She, she did say that, that, um, that is something that it, you know, change, she understands it more now, I think is, is kind of the idea. Um, I don't know if she actually shows it or not, or, you know, whenever she's talking about video, but she has that ability to, and, you know, um, yeah. So I, it, it, it's a powerful thing whenever you, um, you know, serve that. That's the thing I keep coming back to just serving the people that you're working with really well and, and figuring out how to do that. That's why, you know, this thing has transpired, you know, within the last couple of years with her. 
Yeah, and as I've watched you, you know, you've been very intentional with a same day or next day edit mm -hmm. at every wedding. Um, mm -hmm. We just put a YouTube video out last week. If you don't subscribe over on our YouTube channel, Nick breaks down how he edited a same day edit in under an hour. Just mm -hmm. go to our YouTube channel or howtofilmweddings.com slash getting started, I think yes. is the correct way to go. Yes. Right, Nick? That is the correct way to go. Did I get the link yes. correct? You did. Um, and you can, you can check that out. He literally in real time edits that so you can see. But enough about the plug over towards YouTube, which you should definitely <laughs> check out. But... The point being is, did that thing get you this fourteen thousand dollar booking? And I've, you know, I've seen you get several ten thousand plus dollar bookings now. And just this time last year, you were like, ah, I booked a nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollar wedding. I just really want to book a ten thousand dollar wedding. Like, and just to watch, it's like, it's it's a lot of work that you did, and most people aren't willing to put in that extra work. But you did it, and you've mm -hmm. now passed a thousand days of like this intentionality. And if you're out there and you're like, "Oh my goodness, I've already booked too many weddings next year," you need to get intentional. You mm -hmm. need to like stop saying yes. You need to start saying no. You need to really look at your prices. Um, one thing, and, yeah, go ahead. Well, one one thing that I, that I was going to say about getting intentional and like knowing what you're doing and stuff. I was actually looking, um, you know, kind of at our numbers and trying to figure out, you know, hey, where am I getting most of my inquiries? Is it from YouTube? Is it from Instagram? You know, that kind of stuff. And I was looking at the money breakdown, and you were talking about, you know, charging more and making about the same. In, uh, you know, the money that came in in 2019 was about 140 thousand dollars, which is an incredible number. But we shot. Um, including this elopement, it was like 29 weddings that year in 2019. And it was like, wow. Well, as I look at our numbers for 2021, okay, and the, the, the projected into next year and stuff, you know, the bookings, I'm already sitting at, uh, we're at in 2021 with, um, what was it, 15 weddings. And that number has now hit 117,000. So I'm doing almost 15 less and, you know, only, you know, $20,000 different. Like that's, I, I'm okay with doing mm -hmm. less work if it's that less work and it's still, you know, making up and, and it's been intentional and in doing all of these things and, uh, constantly raising our prices and figuring out, you know, our website and our branding and how it's all worked together. I love that analogy of, you know, the flywheel and what book good, good to great or whatever is the illustration from that book where, you know, they're talking about moving this, this gear, this flywheel, this thing that's spinning and what, what got it spinning really fast? Which push was it? Which crank was it? Which turn was it? And in reality, it's all of it. It's not mm -hmm. just one thing that caused us to do that. So, uh, the one thing that I do want to like really stress with you guys is it's easy to look at me in year eight, John in year 87, however long he's been doing this. And, uh, you know, you hear I'm booking 14,000, he's booking $15,000 weddings and which, is incredible, but it's taken time. Like it, it, it's one of those things where if you want to do this kind of stuff, there are people out there that can like get those weddings really fast and, you know, book them and kind of fall into something. But for most people, okay, it's going to be that time and that energy being consistent, being intentional, working for years and years and years with people so that you can get that going so that you can book those weddings. So yeah, I love all of that. I, I really do. I, I It's so fun to watch. And that's what, you know, creatively as a business person, like that is a great thing. Like I love being creative in my business and I love using my creativity on that side of it. And so um, we have a lot more to talk about. We have, um, I, I want to break down a lot when it comes to the, the wedding that I did, um, the wedding I just booked, I mean, for 15,000. And we're going to do that after this break we are. Hi, it's Michael from Weditor. We want to thank everyone for the incredible support we've received since sponsoring How to Film Weddings. Yes, we've had some growing pains, but we've had far more wins. And we're doing something that's never been done. We're a remote team of over 50 editors in 10 countries. I often joke that we're as much a logistics company as we are a creative company. Right now, demand is off the charts. And we don't just say yes to everyone and scramble to figure it out. That's why we're asking you to help us help more of you. In short, we're looking for more talented editors, part-time or full-time, work from where you want, when you want, 
as long as you hit deadlines and deliver quality. It's a chance to get paid while growing as an editor. Our project managers work with you, explaining why something feels right or doesn't, because there's always a reason. If you're interested, we'd love to hear from you. Go to weditor.com slash editor and fill out our form. Finding the perfect song for your wedding film can be so frustrating. We spend countless hours searching for the perfect song. When it comes to licensing music, Nick and I both love Musicbed. Not only do they have the best music, but their website makes it so easy to find the perfect song and to find it fast. We have both been using the Musicbed's wedding subscription for years and cannot recommend it enough. Not only are they adding new music from incredible musicians like Chapters, The Light, The Heat, and Tony Anderson all the time, they've made it incredibly easy to search their library for mood, genre, instrumentation, and even key. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed and use promo code HTFW for a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription. howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. All right, we are back from break, and we're going to go ahead and jump into our Weditor question of the day. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. And it is this question, John. How did you book this $15,000 wedding package? Yeah, well, thanks Tell for me the story. awesome softball tee up. I do want to say um, this is a wedding that has no travel fees included. I booked an all-inclusive package for a two-day uh, rehearsal and wedding day, and I'll break all that down in a second. But um, this, like, just to kind of explain the story of this, it's not just like a random person that found me. Like, they had been warmed up to the idea of hiring me for three years. And mm -hmm. that is something that I really want to reiterate to people. Um, we talk to people like uh, Lindsay and Cherish from the Rev Films, and they're booking these $20,000, $30,000, like these crazy packaged weddings. And it's because they have built relationships with the right people mm -hmm. and have been a sustainable business over time. It's not like they booked that in their first year. It's not like they booked that in their second year. If you ask anybody that's booking weddings that are over this price, they've been doing it for a while. They've been very intentional with everything about their business, and they are very confident in the service that they provide. So I just wanted to throw that out there first. But yes. So to kind of uh, answer your question, this is a sister of a wedding uh, that we did three years ago, the groom the groom's sister from three years ago. Uh, one of my most popular videos ever on my YouTube channel. They went insane on the flowers. I don't know if you remember this one, Nick, but it's like the huge flower arrangement above um, on the Is thumbnail. Is this the one I Just, shot with you? No, it's a different one of those. Oh, okay. It's, okay. It was earlier. Um, it okay. might have been 2017. I, it could have been earlier. I can't remember, but I just kept in touch with this girl ever since and mm -hmm. her family they were awesome they were perfect and so been friends with them on facebook done photo shoots for them and uh i saw last weekend or on wednesday they got engaged of last week and uh, she posted it on facebook i sent her just a yay on the comments or whatever and just hoped that she would reach out uh saturday night she sent me an email just saying hey we got engaged two days ago we want to book our venue but we want to make sure you're available. And so I had done a lot of work leading up to this. And that's part of this is like, it doesn't usually just happen out of the blue. Someone's like, I'm willing to pay you this right. much. So exactly. Um, exactly. It, it took a minute. So um, I, I want to go in a little further on some of the things that I did, but Nick, do you have any thoughts or questions or anything about it? Cause I just don't want to ramble forever. Yeah, no, the, the thing that I really want to stress is like, if you're sitting up, well, how do I book these bigger packages? How do I do that? How do I, it's again, we're going to come back to being consistent, having longevity, being intentional, building relationships. Okay. If you do those things, you have good quality, consistent work. You are intentional about what you are putting out there. You are intentional with the relationships that you're building, your branding, your website, that kind of thing. If you are um, intentionally getting in front of people like it, it's definitely possible, but we like to say, okay, uh, okay. If I, if I make really solid films like today and I start, you know, updating my website today and you know, if I'm nice to a planner one time today, like now do I jump into these, you know, eight, 10, 12, $15,000 packages uh, for, for some of you, yes, that can happen. Okay. Like we don't, 
we know that there are people out there that have done that. But again, it is a, the long game. It is the consistent game. It is the intention game doing this over and over. It's the crock pot method, which we like to talk about from time to time here on the podcast. So I, again, um, I, we, I just want to reiterate that fact again, that it takes time to do what we've yeah. accomplished this week. Yeah. And uh, if you know anything about us, I love a good flex, but that's not what we're having this episode about. Um, I love, like, I really do. I love a good flex, but I'm not here saying I made a lot of money. I want to inspire you to wherever you are in your business, if you're even charging more, to, mm-hmm. you know, really up your game when it comes to these things. Um, so I'm going to just break down. I got an email on Sunday uh, at five o'clock um, in the evening. Uh, it was just like a welcome saying I'm newly engaged. And she said, you and your team were my absolute first must when it came to my big day. I was hoping to check and see if you all were available that day and go ahead and proceed with booking you for videography. Just let me know. Here's my phone number. I'm available anytime to chat. So Mm. that gave me a different strategy for what my game plan was going in because she had already said, I was number one on the list. I was the most important. And I knew from the last wedding that we did that they are going to really go all out on this wedding. Like they probably spent 50 to $75,000 just on flowers for the wedding I did before. Mm -hmm. Um, And that wedding that I booked, I booked it at a good deal, but I was more, you know, I had been building for years and years, the one from 2017, but this was one of my first big breakout, like high end weddings that I, I was confident and this was 1200 days ago. I mean, it's a long time ago. So I go into this knowing pretty quickly that they want a book. Um, but I know that I booked her sister-in-law for way less. And you know, when we, it was one of those weddings where you get to it and you're like, Oh, I didn't charge enough. Like Mm, they have an ice sculpture that cost more than me or they have. um, But these people are like the sweetest people. The, they love us. They love the video. Like her dad passed away forever ago. And like, it's just really important to her to have really good memories on video. But having this email gave me a different strategy, which was I'm confidently going into a phone call with the assumed I'm, we're, we're working together. So yeah. if you, you know, the call that I recorded that I said is in the complete wedding video course, you will see that in the tone of my call was, Hey, I'm so like, it, it's not like a, if you book us or whatever. And that's a piece of advice I would give you in your consultations regardless is to pretty much assume the sale and assume that you're going to get the booking, but not in too pushy of a way. So anyway, that email goes out. I immediately sent her a text and said, can you get together? On Tuesday, you know, like Monday, I was what? So we set up a meeting, and yesterday, when I talked to her, I just walked through how it worked, how our packages were set up. And instead of sending her a pricing guide or instead of sending whatever, because I knew her, we are close already, I just said, I'm going to send you two different package options. And um, I'm going to pull up on the screen if you're watching, but I'm also going to. Uh, like if you're on YouTube, you can watch or you can see the actual email. Um, but I'm going to pull up and read word for word kind of the email after I I talked to her on the phone. And so I instead of giving her all the prices on the phone, I said, I'm going to, I gave her a, a, a range. It's going to be somewhere between this and this, but let me send you a couple package options. Yeah. And so um, anything you want to add, Nick? I feel like I'm going a lot, but I've, I want, yeah. Anything to add? Um Um, no, I, I think that the, you know, what you're talking about, um, the tone of what, how people connect with you and how they are, should, you know, depict, you know, uh, sales and consultations, that kind of stuff has as much to do with listening as it does with, you know, selling and talking. And so you picking up on that and kind of assuming the sale because she said it in there, you know, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a good, it's a good tactic. It's a good thing to do. And yeah. That's that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Good job. So we, we had a great call. Um, I basically got, you know, she was ready to put down the deposit or the retainer. Like, so sending this email just basically said, hey, Sarah, I'm so pumped to be working with you all again. I put my favorite emoji, the dancing man. And I said, that's me at your wedding. Hope the purple suit is okay. 
I have your day locked in, so no worries. After chatting with you, here's what I'm thinking for you regarding your wedding package options. And if you can see on the screen, I've given her two different options and just made it decently clear um, that what she gets in option one, what she gets in option two. Option one was wedding day plus her rehearsal for 11500 And I wanted to show her, like, this is what you get for eleven five, which is great. Um, you know, my new pr prices for next year, I have it, it right now starting at um, 8500 And so I added 3000 for extra things that she had mentioned during the call that was completely custom to her. But then I said, there's also this all-inclusive option that I mentioned on the call. Mm -hmm. um, and said, you might want to go with this. And I showed her that instead of eight hours, she would get 12 hours, um, which is a $2,800 upgrade. Instead of an eight minute film, she would get a 10 minute film, which is a $700 upgrade. And then I lined out a thousand dollars more for the wedding ceremony and toast edits, 2000 for the rehearsal dinner, a thousand for an Instagram edit, a thousand for the raw footage, and then a thousand dollars more to digitize her family footage, which we talked about in her um, consultation. She has footage of her dad when she's a little kid and the total bundle or the total price for all that was 18,000. And then I showed if she did the bundle, she would get it for 15,500. So she is seeing, well, for 11, five, I get this option one or for 4,000 more, I'm getting all of these extra things. I'm most, and I can, I know her family, they don't want to just like keep adding random things. And so I just, threw the idea out there and that does two things. It makes the 11 five option seem pretty m way less ex like doable, I guess. So, um, mm -hmm. so it kind of anchors with the $15,000 option, but I just threw it out there in case she wanted to do it. And then I just had a little paragraph that might be a lot. So here's the breakdown of what is above option. One is going to include the rehearsal and is 11 five, but I bundled everything I offer into the all inclusive option and have made it 15 five. The total value of that one is 18. So most people just go with the all inclusive if they want all these things. In this way, there are literally no other charges for anything. I'd be glad to hop back on a phone call if you need me to go over anything. But knowing you and your party, I'm going to guess you'll need that much coverage time. Would want a teaser, the raw footage, family footage, and all the bells and whistles. All you need, uh, all, all I need from you is the green light on either of those, and I will send you over the contract. And she responded back. Eek, let's go with option two. So, you know, that was uh, as soon as I sent her over mm. um, that, I sent her a text just saying, hey, I sent you. A, like, I just am in communication following up. And within 20, 30 minutes, she was talking to her mom. And then this morning, she paid her one third down payment of $5,125 for the reservation, which is more than I used to make in a wedding. And it blows my mind. And she's got three payments leading up to her wedding, but it didn't just happen. Like I have a mindset shift that I am there. I completely customized everything for them. I listened on the phone call and these are all tactics and things that like, aren't these weird salesy business tactics. It's I'm treating them like I would treat my family. Yes, they're paying more. And if they just looked at the final video of my videos versus somebody else, they might say, these final videos are pretty similar. Why would I pay more? And they're paying more for this entire experience with me, the trust that they have with me. And that stuff matters to people that are paying a lot mm -hmm. more. I talked a lot. You did talk a lot. It was, it was really good. It was it was cool to you know hear how you broke that down and how you did that. And um, I know if the situation was a little bit different, right? You probably wouldn't have sent an email that way with you know the pricing like laid out like that and, and spoken. But because you already had this uh, relationship with them, you know, because you knew the family for the last few years and uh, you know you're in contact with them, you you changed stuff up and kind of made it a little more personal, even though I know you're like sending out a pricing guide and you know th that that stuff uh, this was just an easy way to do it but it was because you had that relationship. Like whenever I, uh, with this one that I booked, I was just texting with, um, you know, the planner and you're just kind of going back and forth and sharing ideas and like that kind of stuff. And that's, she was like, yep. Okay. Let's, let's do this. I'll send that over. And so like she handled all the correspondence with, with this specific wedding, which might be one of the first times that I've ever actually done everything through a planner. But 
I feel like the couple has been very vetted because of the planner that they're working with. And I want to, so like I, I was okay doing it that way. And so your approach, how you do things, how you communicate with people, like you need to be paying attention. And we like to say, this is my process. This is, you know, whatever, everything goes through this square hole, right? Everything goes through a square hole, even though they might be a round or a triangle or whatever, any other, an octagon, you know, it's not going to go through and it's not going to work because you do everything the same. But yeah. I, I'm not saying the outcome would be different, but if you handled it differently, it might have not gone as smoothly or she might have said, oh, option one sounds great. You know, we'll just we'll just do that. You customized it to them. So um, as someone that runs your business, as you're doing consultations, you need to have a really good idea of what you want to do and how you want to move forward with them. But you also need to be flexible in that in change and, and shift stuff, especially like I'm really now running into how I always did stuff. You know, when I was sending off $5,000 quotes, now I'm sitting here sending off, you know, 10, 11, $12,000 base quotes. And I'm getting a lot more pushback, I think with, with how, and, and it could be just the process that I'm doing. So I really need to look in and reconfigure some of that kind of stuff so that, um, I can at least get on those phone calls and that kind of stuff. So, uh, anyway, there you go. Yeah. I love all that. And I love that you're hitting your head on those problems. And some of you might be out there like, well, I wouldn't have done it that way for my business or whatever. And I would tell you that just cause I do something a certain way or Nick does something a certain way, you know, I'm thinking again about my friends, Lindsay and Cherish at LaRev. They have a completely different business model because they've built mostly their relationships with planners. Mm. And so they're not even talking to the couple. They're not. And so if that's the way you do things, but giving that custom experience. And when I built the, these packages, like I really looked through what all it would take. And I told my wife, you know, I've told her we were only going to book five weddings and we have eight weddings booked already. <laughs> And I was like, are we going to, am I going to book a ninth wedding? Like, when am I going to stop? Like, what am I actually going to, and you know, we had a conversation and she was like, you loved working with this family. You're going to enjoy doing this wedding. You're going to have a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. They're going to pay you a lot. So just quote them, you know, what you really want to make. And if they say no, it's okay. And that gets us back to the beginning of this conversation. Is that what you were going to I I, I, uh, yeah. I, I I love where you're going. I'm going to let you finish it. Okay. So it gets us back to the beginning of this conversation where because I've been really freaking intentional and it's difficult, it's difficult to say no to somebody that wants you to come to Italy for 5,000 bucks or two, you know, or whatever it is that it's like, oh, I want that wedding. I need, but like saying no when you know you need to say no, but I wouldn't have known that if I didn't know oh, in 2022, I only want this many weddings. And if mm -hmm. I didn't know, well, I need to make this much money to help support my family this year. So when I know those two things and I'm intentional about those things, I say like saying no is really difficult for me. I'm a people pleaser, first of all. So I want to make it work for anybody. And the more that I've gotten comfortable with just being okay with missing out on the big, like Southern Hills Country Club is really big for me in Tulsa. It's like the place where like you go get married if you're really spending money. And there are several couples that have reached out to me that I'm outside of their budget now. And that's really hard for me to be like, oh, I need that wedding. I want that. I have to have that wedding or my business is going to fail. And so by having that intention, like we talked about at the beginning mm. of the conversation, yeah. it has allowed me the, I don't need everybody to book me at $10,000. But what it has done for my market, and I know several people in the Tulsa market that are very thankful that I'm charging what I'm charging because it allows them to say, well, yeah, John is charging this. He's been doing this for 15 years. I'm charging, you know, if somebody in my market now can charge $5,000 and be a le like the middle of the line, not the top of the line. And so mm. in every single market, there is room at the very, very top. And if you're three, four years into your business, you are a veteran. You've done this longer than 95% of people. And if you're not in a place of being uncomfortable with your pricing and what you're offering, I would encourage you to really look at it and say, huh, it's probably time for a raise in my prices. If I'm, you know, if your baseline, you know, you're, I got to get this many weddings booked and I'm going to stay at $2,000. I'm going to book 50 of them and then I'll feel comfortable. I'll tell you this. You never feel comfortable. Like I never feel comfortable 
even you know years where I've made a quarter of a million dollars of wedding video. It's just like, oh, I could make more. I could do. Mm. So being intentional is super duper important. Nick, you had your hand up to say something. Yeah, well, I really, I, what do you want? Yeah, add? I, I was just going to say, you know, knowing your numbers and knowing how many you want to shoot and knowing, you know, all that stuff and being intentional about that can really help you. Um, I uh, earlier this year, I booked an eight thousand dollar elopement in Savannah, Georgia, eight thousand dollars for an elopement. And, um, you know, uh, some people are like, man, like that's, that's kind of, that's kind of ballsy to charge that much for, for, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm sitting here, I was like, yeah, um, I don't want to do, I'm not going to do those things because I know financially I'm okay. I know my numbers. I know where I want to be. If it's one that I really want to do, you know, maybe I'll give them a little bit of a, a discount, but I'm like, if, if I'm, if I'm going to spend a weekend away from my family, if I'm going to go do this, it needs to be worth my time and my energy for me to do it. And so when you know that stuff, that's where, you know, Jen and I were talking, you know, and we got an inquiry and we're like, you know, it's kind of a cool place, but we're pretty booked up. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. But, you know, base, it's going to be, you know, a $10,000 quote or a $12,000 quote. And if they're with that, like, okay, great. And if they're not, then I'm like, okay, like we're going to be okay based on what we already have booked in our numbers and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, these are, yes. <laughs> it's fun our our language with each other through zoom where i can just put a, a small hand up and you're like oh i will stop now for you um i i just really want to bring the point home this this whole like being november you know almost next year already getting ready to go into this crazy busy season um you know I, it there's just a lot riding on the table and you know, Nick and I do have our course and we want you to join it because we've now seen hundreds of people join the course and we have such a happy rating review of, of the course. Mm. So many people that have done, you know, they've, the investment into their core, into that in their selves has paid off a ton and that's great. And we want that for you. Like we will still be fine if you don't purchase it. But the point being, if you're not getting yourself to a place in your calendar in your year, you're going to burn out and want to quit. And mm -hmm. I can't tell you how great it is on the other side of being intentional for a thousand days by investing into courses, by investing into friendships, by investing into everything that we've been doing for the last three, four years, it pays off. The hard work is worth it. And we want you to be in a place to where if you are feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling backlogged, if you're feeling like you're not charging enough, if you don't know where you're going, we want to be there to help. And mm. that is what that workshop is all about. We want to give you motivation leading into next year because yep. most wedding filmmakers are not going to put in the work to do the things they need to do to get to where they want to go. And that's what we want to do with How to Film Weddings. That's why we're here. We want to elevate the industry. We want to help you, regardless whether if you buy stuff from us or not. Our mission is to help elevate that entire standard. So I get all excited yes. about it. I get on you the do. soapbox. I try to not be up there, but it's what I'm passionate about. And that's what Nick's yep. passionate about. And we love this community and we want to continue to give mm -hmm back to the community. So that's all I have. I think so. I think I'm, I think I'm good. You, My you, coffee you good? is hit. Yeah. yeah I, I've, I've got a lot more that I could go to, but of course yeah, you do. I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah. all I have. Why don't I'll let you, uh, land the plane. I love all of you guys. I'm going to try to be quiet for 60 seconds. Are you going to hold your breath there too? Anyway, guys, we thank you so much for listening to this week's podcast. We really, really do hope that it was helpful for you and encouraging to you and, you know, striving in your business. Again, we are doing this free filmmaking with intention workshop. It is going to be November 15th and 16th, uh, which is one week from today as this episode drops. If you would like to register and save your seat, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash intention. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash intention to register for that. Again, we're going to tease it. Maybe some really cool things that we're going to give away. Mm, one. Mm, one, mm, maybe. One thing. Mm, one thing. <laughs> anyway. I didn't, did, 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 did. <laughs> I didn't make it 60 seconds. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, we will see ya. See ya. Are you looking for a better way to deliver your wedding films to your couples? Look no further. Our friends over at Wedflow provide the most flexible video delivery solution on the market. 
Webflow is pay per project with no large upfront cost or commitment, and you can cancel any time. Not only that, Webflow offers a premium viewing experience for your couples. Accessible on mobile, tablet, desktop, as well as their very own suite of TV apps. Each project comes with 10 years hosting and an experience for your clients that will blow them away. Stop delivering your films the old fashioned way and give your couples something to rave about. Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Wedflow to check out Wedflow today.